Okay, hi everybody and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we're going to look at how we can provide some input to our program when it starts running. So the objective here is for you to be able to construct a simple graphical user interface so that the program can receive input at the beginning of its execution. So typically when we run an experiment for example we want it to be as close to identical for all participants, um, at least those participants within a particular group, as, as is possible. However, there's also some aspects that we want to be specific to a particular time that we're running the program. For example, we might want to give a participant number, or we might want to give a repeat number, or we might want um, the um, program to be specific to a, a particular condition. So a straightforward way we can do this in Scikit-Py is to build a simple GUI. So GUI stands for Graphical User Interface that gets um, brought up when the program begins. So the user can then um, put in the required information and we can then use this in the rest of our program. So let's have a look at how we can do this. If we go to Spider, as usual. So to create this um, graphical user interface, we're going to use a sub package in Scikit-Py called GUI. So as you know we need to import this functionality so we start our script with an import psychopy.gui. Now to create it we're going to define a variable called GUI and we create this by using a functionality in psychopy.gui uh, called DLG. So this stands for dialogue. This is basically the idea that something's going to pop up on the screen that we're going to be able to um, interact with as the user running this program. So when we're all, all set, we issue the um, function gui.show. Okay, so we haven't really done anything to it yet, but let's save this and run it just to see what it looks like. All right, so you can see that we've um, created this um, dialog box and it's got two buttons, OK and Cancel. So if we press OK, that um, finishes and the program ends. So let's add some information to this GUI so we can um, have the user provide some um, relevant information. So what we want to, might want to do is have a way that the user can provide a participant ID and a run number. So let's say the participant ID is P1000 and this is the first run. So what we can do is um, use this function called add field. It's part of the GUI. So let's call it subject ID. So that's one field that the user can um, enter information into. The next one, let's add another. Whoops. Let's call that condition num. Okay, so now we've, we've added two um, fields to this GUI. So let's have a quick look at what that looks like. All right, so now you can see there's some more information in our dialog box. We've got this label subject ID, and we can enter some information in here. Also got a label condition number, and we can enter information in here. And we still have these OK and cancel buttons. Okay, so let's finish there. So. As you can see, we can provide this data in these two fields, but how can we get it out? So once the user has pressed a button, this will return, and the data that the usual user entered will be contained within this um, property called data. So let's just have a look. We save that and run it. Okay, so remember we wanted the subject ID to be P1000 and the condition to be condition number one. Okay, so now we're looking at the contents of GUI.data here, and we can see that it's a two item list where the first item is P1000 and the second item is 1. So ignore these U's in front of the strings, uh, they don't, don't matter for our, our purposes. Okay, so that's a simple way that we can get this information into our program. So, one last point is well, here we've got condition number as a string but perhaps we might want to use that as a number in our program. So how can we do that? So first let's 
extract the subject ID from the um, GUI.data string. So see that it's the first item here. So we index that using the zero index. Okay, so now we have the condition number equals GUI.data1. Okay, so the trouble here is that this GUI.data1 is a string. So we couldn't actually use this as a number. So we couldn't add other numbers to it, for example. Um, but what we can do is tell Python, explicitly tell Python that we want this to be a number. And in particular, we want it to be an integer. So we use this function int, which is going to convert this string into a number. So let's just have a look at, so if we print the subject ID, and we also print the condition number. So if we save it and run it, again we'll do P1001. Alright, so you can see we've been able to pull out our um, subject ID. We've also been able to pull out our condition number. Now just to show you that condition number here is the number one rather than the string one, we can print out what would happen if we added one to it. So again, P1001. We see that we've got a two in an output because by using this int function, we've converted the string to a number that we can then sensibly add the number one to it and produce our output. Okay, so looking at our objective, so this is a fairly simple screencast today. So what we wanted to be able to do was be able to construct this simple GUI and use it to, to get input from the user when we start running our program. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.